Welcome to an introduction to accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this short podcast, we shall be looking at job costing and taking you through some worked examples. Job costing means that we are trying to determine the cost of each unit of output. We have to determine and take account of the fixed costs and the variable costs, and the aim is to determine the full cost and to make use of this information for management and for selling prices. We have to measure all our resources in monetary terms so they can be compared and determined. Where there is more than one product, we must try and allocate the resources so that costs are being assigned to a product. Here we have a typical example of costing. A dairy is producing a tonne of butter, which represents 2,000 packs. If there are no other products being produced by the dairy, then we would simply add up all of the costs for a period and divide by the units produced in that period. In this example, the total cost of £850 is divided by 2,000 to give a cost per pack of 42.5 pence. It is usually not quite as simple. What happens if the prices of the raw materials alter during the period? What happens to cost per unit if different numbers of units are produced in the period? What are the fixed costs that can be identified? What are the variable costs? What are the direct costs? Direct costs are those that can be identified with the production of the units, and they are often called specific unit costs. It means that we can identify these costs and associate them only with the units being produced. For the butter we can say that milk as a raw material is a direct cost. If the labour only produces butter then the cost of that labour is also a direct cost. Indirect costs cannot be measured directly for the unit and they will be shared among all the products that are being produced. These include the costs of rent and of staff who are associated with sales or with an activity such as security of a plant. For job costing to be effective we have to be able to do two things. We must identify the direct costs and we must identify the indirect costs. Then we must assign each unit an appropriate proportion of the indirect costs. We will return to the dairy and look at milk production. A dairy will purchase the raw material of milk from farmers and will treat it through pasteurization and then package it for resale. We are assuming here that the dairy also produces other products. Can you identify which of these are likely to be direct costs and which are probably indirect costs? My suggestion here would be that only the raw milk and packaging on this list are direct costs. The others are probably all indirect costs. If the pasteurization were only for milk for resale, then that would be direct. But it is probable that the plant used for pasteurization will be used for all products. Here is a very typical problem relating to allocation of costs in a service industry. How do we allocate costs for a solicitor's office? The clerical staff will be working for all partners and for all the clients. We need a unit of measurement here. The easiest method to use for measurement is the measurement of time, determining how much time is spent on each client. The time spent can then be translated into monetary units. The rate at which we charge overheads is referred to as the overhead absorption rate or sometimes as the recovery rate. We will look at a simple example of this. A motorcycle servicing business has overheads of 8,000 a month and direct labour costs of 400 hours per month. The rate at which these costs are absorbed is determined by dividing the total overhead cost by the direct hours. In this case 8,000 divided by 400 is equal to $20 an hour. Now let us apply this to a particular job. If parts and materials cost $50 and the mechanic is paid at $10 an hour for the four hours of work completed, 
then what is the full cost of the repair? We know the direct costs are the $50 for materials and 4 hours at $10 an hour, which is $40, making a total of $90 for the direct costs. We determined that overheads were to be charged at $20 per hour, so that we must add 4 hours of overhead charges, which is $80. That makes the full cost of the repair equal to $170. Although there is actually no rule for using time as the basis of measurement, it is often used since it can be measured easily and can be translated into monetary terms. The time on most jobs can be measured. A business makes racks for bicycles and has a number of direct and indirect costs which are shown in the table. If it takes two hours of direct labour and six dollars of materials to make each rack, then what is the full cost of making a rack? The direct labour cost is 14,000 and the direct labour time is 700, so each hour is $20. Two hours work comes to $40. And to this we add the materials of $6, giving a total of $46 direct costs. Now we look at the indirect costs, labour, utilities, depreciation and other indirect costs, which total 6300 We need a cost per hour, so we shall divide this total by the 700 hours. This gives us $9 per labour hour. So the full cost will be the $46 plus 2 hours at $9 per hour, which is $18, giving a total of $64. Although most businesses will allocate using time as the basis for calculating indirect costs, there can be occasions when machine costs might be more relevant, such as in a capital-intensive environment. The total allocation will remain the same but it is not acceptable to cost one job on a time basis and another on a machine hours basis. A manufacturer of fuel tanks can allocate either on time or on machine hours. What will be the difference? Overheads are $16,000, direct labour is 800 hours and machine hours are 500. Jobs 1 and 2 both require 400 labour hours each. But job 1 requires 400 machine hours, whilst job 2 requires only 100 machine hours. First, we calculate indirect costs using direct labour. Each job requires 400 hours. So 16,000 divided by 800, then multiplied by 400, gives $8,000 for each job. We have allocated evenly. Now we shall allocate using machine hours. So for job 1 we divide the $16,000 costs by the total machine hours of 500, then multiply by 400 to give an answer of $12,800. For job 2 the answer will be $3,200. The total overheads charged by either method will be $16,000. All that happens is that we share the cost differently using the two different methods. Suppose that the business can divide the total indirect costs as being 10,000 related to machine hours and 6,000 related to other overheads. Now we are in a position to segment the overheads and apportion machine hours and direct labour hours and to get costs on this basis. The direct labour cost for job 1 will be calculated by dividing 6,000 by total direct labour time of 8,000 hours, then multiply by the hours for each job, which is 400 each. So we have costs of 3,000 for each job. Now we calculate for overheads based on machine hours. Divide the 10,000 by the total machine hours of 500, then multiply for number of hours for each job. Job 1 has 8,000 allocated and Job 2 has 2,000 allocated. The total for Job 1 is 11,000 and for Job 2 is 5,000. 
Note that even when we segment costs like this, we are still going to end up with a total of 16,000, since all we have done is to look at the sharing differently. Most businesses consist of more than one department, and each department can often be considered as a cost unit. If each department acts as a cost center and records direct hours, direct materials, and any other direct costs, then we have the necessary information to start allocation of costs to cost centers. In some cases a business may be involved in treating each job separately and in this case we say that we are able to carry out batch costing. A theatre producing plays will treat the tickets for each different production as a batch for costing purposes. You should note that full costing methods are based on break-even points. For profit an additional cost is then added to give a selling price. Since costs are not known precisely until after the job is completed, then the calculations are based on predictions. This ends our first podcast on costing, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Park Bench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.